Let's start off. I want you to picture yourself lying down on the ground, looking up at the clouds. Maybe you're trying to figure out what the shape means. Or maybe you're looking up at the night sky, thinking about the stars and your place in the world. Or maybe you're feeling a sense of majesty, and maybe you're feeling a sense of wonder. Small, but connected at the same time. I witnessed this phenomenon for 10 days at the city of Toronto's Nuit Blanche event, the largest free contemporary art event in North America. What is it that would make people, hundreds of them, lie down on the ground staring at a plastic ball of light? What if I told you this wasn't a couple of people? What if I told you this was over a million? The artwork I'm referring to is called Death of the Sun by Director X. What made the artwork so successful wasn't that it was a plastic ball of light. It was the deeper journey the artist went on to discover his truth. And it was the intention to serve humanity behind the piece that everybody felt. Hi, I'm Umberine Inayat, and I go on that deep journey with creatives to help them find their truth. This is a new way of creating work, and I'm here to talk to you today about what it takes and how to do it. But what you need to know is that even though I'm an artistic producer and I'm a curator, I'm actually a social worker. And it's the social work skills and the therapeutic journey that is contributing to the magic that you're going to see today. But let's start at the beginning. I became a social worker because I was bullied as a child. I was from Scarborough, and I was very different growing up. I had a different skin color. My parents were two different religions. I ate different food, listened to different music, and my name was even different. I thought I was normal until one day I realized that everyone's jokes that they were making were actually about me. I felt super alone and sad, and I was depressed. But then I met a social worker, and this social worker changed my life. She helped me to understand that actually what I was going through was racism. People treated me this way because they didn't understand me, and that threatened how they felt in the world. And I had never thought of it like that before. What she would do is she would get me to write in my journal and encourage me to express myself in ways that was creative, because I didn't have an outlet at home. And I would meet up with her every week, and I would read my journals out loud to her while she encouraged me, validated how I felt, and helped me understand the world. She absolutely changed my life, and I made a promise to myself that one day I too would become a social worker and help others the way she helped me. I fulfilled that promise, and I became a social worker. I got a master's in psychotherapy, and I specialize in trauma sitting with people and their pain, helping them unpack their journeys and find new ways to heal. I specialize in narrative therapy because I found that storytelling was a really positive way and a safe space for people to tell their stories, but be able to create new endings to heal. I worked in social work for years, actually, but I was always interested in art. My dad was an artist, and I grew up watching him take photographs and draw I wanted to be just like him. He used to write calligraphy, and he taught me how to write, and I actually created my own special signature. So eventually, I followed my heart, and I went into the contemporary art world. Except, because I was worried about being judged, and I was different, I didn't tell them that I was a social worker from Scarborough, a place full of immigrants where you would hear diverse music, languages, and you would actually smell the spices from a block away. But it was those actual skills that helped me connect with artists from all the way around the world. But I was scared, and I hid this fact from the art world, and I hid it from myself. This went on for years. Until one day, I saw this work by Ai Weiwei. Ai Weiwei was a artist who was on house arrest in China, for his freedom-fighting beliefs. What you see here is a huge monumental sculpture, and it's made of bicycles, and it looks powerful. But what it actually is, it's a brand. The piece is called Forever Bicycles, and it's a brand that he couldn't afford as a child. 
he, shall, he used to actually chase it down the street. And he made this statement about this brand that he couldn't afford, basically saying that who actually owns the power and how come he didn't have it growing up. When I saw this work, I completely was stopped in my tracks because some, for some reason I had a flash of insight and it reminded me that I was a social worker who had specialized in narrative therapy. And artworks like this made me wake up to my truth because it made me see that artists can use storytelling as a way to tell their truths and help others along the way. After that, I continued my journey into social work and I saw it after a world-renowned artist, JR. He was a TED Prize winning artist and what he would do is give people a platform to tell their truths. People who were forgotten, people who were like the elderly, women, people who were in places like favelas, people considered dangerous. And for the first time when I met him, I said out loud that I believe art is therapy. He agreed and we went on a journey to create an exhibition in Toronto that featured hundreds of face of Torontonians. Many of them had said they had felt pure joy experiencing a public art project because no one had ever asked them before. After this, I continued my social work journey in art and I sought out world-renowned music video director, some of you might know as Director X. Director X had been affected by gun violence that year and I sat down with him and told him that I was a social worker and that I was trying to use my platform to make a change and make artworks that stood for humanity. He agreed and we both decided to make his first public artwork together. X wanted to tell a story about the universe, but I wanted to tell a story that was a little bit deeper and so I pushed him and I pushed him to find his truth. We talked a lot about his childhood memories, trauma, up until the day he was affected by gun violence. And one hard night, he said to me, you know what, Umbreen? I wanna show people that we're all living on one planet, but yet we are killing ourselves. I want to stop this senseless violence. And I knew we were getting somewhere. I continued to push him and I said, X, if there's one thing you can show in the universe, what would that be? And then he said, the sun. I continued to push and said, let's talk about the deeper meaning, the hidden story, and let's think about your own. He looked down and looked back up at me and said, well, what if the son were to die? And I knew in my heart that that was it. A metaphorical near-death experience the public would be able to experience similar to his own. We created this artwork, Death of the Sun. What you're seeing here is actually the experience where you watch the sun take its last dying breath. We knew we had to have it be extremely large, so we made a 45 foot sphere. We thought about atmospherics, temperature, sound. We made a meditative soundtrack that went with it. And we put it in the public square of City Hall Toronto, where people from all walks of life could experience the work. Well, the people had spoken. Death of the Sun was one of the most successful projects in the 14-year history of Nuit Blanche. One day, we got a call from an artist, some of you might know as Drake, and basically what he said was he wanted to take Death of the Sun to be his main stage art for the Boy Meets World Tour. And we all stood in awe because a powerful bridge between contemporary art and the concert stage had been made from a work made from narrative therapy. Was this a plastic ball of light that was so successful? No. It was a deeper journey the artist took to discover his inner truth, the painful journey, and make artwork from there. And it was also, maybe, working with a social worker turned artistic producer, both deciding they weren't gonna give up. I believe we all need places like this to feel and look for our inner truth. And I think public art can serve as a space for that. We're all carrying around stuff in life. It's hard to go through life without bumps and bruises. 
But what happens is if you don't deal with your stuff, it manifests into something larger. It's bigger than us. We're all bearing witness to what's happening to the world today in terms of climate destruction, political extremism, racism, inequality, and violence all still exists. This to me tells me the world needs collective healing. So the next time you experience an artwork and you're struck by it, maybe ask yourself, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? Name it. Let it come out. Think about how it needs to serve you, or maybe think about how you need to let it go. What action do you need to do when you feel an artwork? Maybe you need to forgive someone, and maybe that someone is you. The deep connection between public art has fueled my life ever since. The following are a bunch of examples I'm going to show you where I've used the same trajectory to make similar type of work. This is Numa by Floria Sigismondi. Together we worked on a project and when she looked at the site, she said she was really attracted to the water. When I asked her why, she said she had an almost near-death drowning experience as a child. We decided to go there and unpack that story, and we ended up making an artwork where someone was in the water and they actually floated up to the top, a new, safer passageway. This piece was cathartic for her, so much so that she put herself inside the work, and that's what you're looking at today. It definitely affected the multitudes of people who came to see it. In fact, we had to stop many of them from walking on water and trying to touch it. This piece is called Truth by an artist named Quest. Quest came to me and we chatted about his life and he told me how he was rejected by society because he didn't fit in. He liked to paint and he liked to paint at night and he learned differently. His parents sent him to military school and when he came back, he just left and he spent his time being homeless, living in trains, living in the wilderness and he escaped death many times. He was on a quest in search for the self. We decided to go on a journey together and make an artwork. And so we decided to create the one word that you just cannot avoid when you look at yourself in the mirror, and that's your truth. We built a 75-foot sculpture of the word truth, and we barricaded it so that the public could go on a journey and search for their truth along the way. This public square had been affected by gun violence before. And this event and that night there was no violence that took place. This is the Lunar Garden by Daniel Arsham. It's over 100 feet, and it was scored by Charlotte Day Wilson. This piece served as a place for meditation in the busy, bustling center of City Hall. I'm not sure what people were thinking, but I know they weren't able to walk away. I was once a kid who was bullied, but then I became a social worker, I hid that from the art world, but since then and now, I have discovered my own inner truth. And today, I'm calling on a new movement in public art. Call it public art as therapy. This is a new way to make art, because what happens is the artist goes on a journey with a therapist and goes on a journey to discover their truth. Through that place comes catharsis, that moment of enlightenment, and the artwork is made from there. The result is a deep connection. And also, this call to action isn't just for contemporary artists. It's for artists in music, fashion, design, architecture, anything. Because public art is just that, it's public. It's for everyone. This is also a call to action for the public who come to consume art. Maybe open yourselves up to go on your own inner journey and think about what the artist's intention was while you were there. Also, maybe look to the right and look to the left of you. Make eye contact and nod your head at the person beside you, because guaranteed, they're feeling something too. A few years later, I went on another journey with my dear friend, Director X. This time, we explored his deep pain about climate change and we created a new work that basically says, if we don't change the way we're treating ourselves and this planet, the planet will exist, but humanity as we know it will not. Let's give rise to a new movement 
where public art is therapy because we are all connected and we can understand each other in brand new ways. Thank you very much.